Good morning. We are so glad you could all come this morning and be with us at Westview Church. Welcome to all of you who are here and watching online. A special welcome to our visitors who are here. Thank you for being here and coming on this beautiful Sunday morning. I know that this coming week is a busy week. We've already entered into back to school season for parents, for students, teachers, educators, staffers. We're so, I really want to lift all of you up in prayer. It's a busy time, and we're glad um, that you could join us on a Sunday before we get started with this week. We really, at Westview, we wish to bless um, students and educators. We do have our giving table set up for back to school drive. We hope to um, bless the community with some back to school um, giving and, and gifts and, and donations. We have another Sunday, I think, before that wraps up, so please remember that in the coming week as you go out shopping. In our own students that go to Westview, we have some gift cards to give to you um, for your back-to-school shopping. That's a gift from deacons. Please meet me and other deacons just across the way from the nursery to pick that up if you're here today. And if you're not here today and you're watching online, it will be here waiting for you in the coming weeks. At our visitor center, I really want to urge all of you to stop by. We have a few different sign-ups, and they're all very important. And they're to help get us through this, um, through the rest of this year, but also even considering future programming this fall. We have our coffee sign-up, the hospitality scene or team. They do a lot of great work helping ease those efforts, but there is a sign-up sheet and there are some vacant spots for um, coffee makers. We also have sign-ups for um, fall dinner circle. Dinner circle is a great ministry. It's been going on for years and years, and if you haven't done it, try it. If you haven't done it for a while or you're regular, sign up again. Um, that's a blessing to all of us as we connect with one another, and then also 
For the remainder of this year, we have a sign up for our prayer, our congregational prayer, God's prayer for the people. Um, Gail has a sign up sheet. Many of you have signed up, but there's some vacant holes, and we'd love to see that filled out. And today's our last day to voluntarily put your name there, but that list will get put together and sent out soon. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Sophie. Well, good morning. good morning, and good morning to those who are watching online. I'm glad that you're there as well. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Psalm 23, and so as a call to worship, I thought from Psalm 100, I think it's the third verse, know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And it's that sheep of his pasture and that good shepherd uh, theme that we're picking up on this morning. And so my prayer as we begin this service is shepherd us, Lord. Shepherd us all uh, through this next hour. And now to receive the greeting from God, would you stand to receive that? Because our good shepherd is here and he extends himself to each one of us with his grace, mercy, peace, and love. It's all from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus, and from and through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Would you please greet those who are standing near you?
Thank you, Ken. <laughs> what a blessed day it is to come into the house of the Lord. Please join me in praying. We have come into this house and gathered in your name to worship you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing us into your holy presence. We thank you for sending your precious son, Jesus, to die to save us from our sins. Please forgive us for the sins we have committed against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. Our souls thirst for God, for the living God. Please help our church as we heal. Many of us have been shaken to our core. We cry out to you, O Lord, for clarity for the men and women on our council who are guiding our church forward. Please, Lord, let all the decisions that are made be pleasing and rooted in your will. We pray for a new pastor, Lord. We know you have already chosen the perfect one for us. Please, Lord, may he be firmly rooted in your word. We thank you for our Westview family, Lord. Please help us to stand together in your name against all evil and urge us onward to lead others to you because that is what you call us to do. We pray for our children and teachers that are returning to school soon, Lord. Protect them from Satan and his evil that seeks to destroy them. Also guide us as a church as we begin a new season of learning. May we send all of our children to these groups because we can never stop learning about you. Our children are the future of our church and our country. Please, please let us help them to make your, you and your word our priority. Lord, we lay before you our sick and the suffering. Please, may they look to you for peace and assurance that you will never leave or forsake them. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. Many days and nights become so long and so lonely. Please heal that loneliness with your love. Be with us now as Pastor Larry brings your word today. Please help us to listen and apply the message to our lives. We love you, Lord. May we do and say and be a fragrant offering of love to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Diane. Well, before the children are dismissed, I'd like to have uh, any children here come forward. And I have a picture for you to look at. And uh, congregation can see it too, maybe. Unless your eyesight isn't very good and you're way in the back row. But anyway, can you come up here by me? We're going to look at this picture. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. Okay. You know, when I was your age... This picture was hanging on our wall in our house. And I would sit there, like you're standing here now, and I'd look at that picture. So can you look at the picture? And what do you see? Sheep. Yeah, lots of sheep, aren't there? Yeah. What else do you see? Jesus. Jesus. And what's Jesus doing? He's holding a lamb. He's holding a lamb. A little lamb. You know, the title of this picture is The Good Shepherd. So Jesus is the good shepherd. He's our shepherd. And then I want to ask you, are you in that picture? Where are you in that picture? Any idea? Take a look. Are you, are you a big grown-up sheep? I don't think so, no. How about a lamb? Yeah, a little one. You know Jesus holds, the Bible tells us that, he holds little lambs close to his heart. And that means you. Okay? So I want to pray for you, and then you can go. So let's pray, and you can just look at Jesus' picture there. And I want to say, Lord Jesus, 
Would you hold these children close to your heart today? Would you shepherd them as your sheep? And all of us, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, thank you that you're our shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, thank you. You may go, uh, those of you who are going here too. And our offering now is going to be for Kids Hope, right? Kids Hope, yeah. There it is. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming most of you have never raised sheep. Um, I just want to just not assume that, though. I want to check that out. So if you've ever raised sheep or had sheep, would you raise your hand really high so I can see you? Okay, just a couple of you. Well, that means I can be an authority on sheep this morning. <laughs> Full disclosure here, before I say anything about sheep, I love sheep. Uh, we had, uh, several years we had sheep. Uh, we also, as my brother and I, had bottle lambs, which means uh, uh, some lambs that had not been claimed by their mother, the ewe, had been uh, rejected, and if you didn't take care of them and feed them by a bottle, they would have died. And so we raised some of those, and oh, they were the best pets I ever had. They really were. When you would bond with one of those little lambs and, and they would begin to grow up, they would follow you anywhere. They were so, so really loving, and uh, oh, I, just, I just love sheep. Hudsonville Fair begins tomorrow. <laughs> Sandy knows that any time I go to a fair, the first place I go is to the sheep barn. And I usually say something, I'm going to go comfort me some sheep. <laughs> because a lot of times sheep are a little disturbed when they're in strange surroundings. And it's just helpful to have someone come and speak tenderly to them and uh, pet them. And tomorrow at 5 o'clock, the sheep are up front and center on the show. So uh, come to Hudsonville Fair at 5 o'clock and I'll <laughs> see you there at the sheep barn. Now I'm going to say something about those sheep. They're the dumbest animals God ever made. <laughs> now, it doesn't change the fact that I, I love them and that they're wonderful, but it, it's not a compliment that God has called us sheep. I mean, think about it. How about if the Detroit Lions would change their name to the Detroit Lambs <laughs> or the sheep? Well, maybe, maybe that, I don't, no, I'm not going there. Um, it's not a compliment because sheep are, are really so dependent upon, they cannot survive on their own. 
you know, cattle or hogs or whatever uh, on our farm, they could be out in the pasture. As long as they had some grass and some water, you could forget about them for weeks, and they'd be just fine. The sheep, you forget about them for one day. Oh, my. It's not by accident, then, that Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And when sheep go astray and turn to their own way, they get into no end of trouble. And uh, they can... Well, I've got stories. I'll tell you one. We were sitting at our table one evening having our evening meal, and, and there was a knock at the door. It was a neighbor who said, uh, you've got a sheep out in your pasture that's in trouble. And so we thanked him. We went out there, and sure enough, this sheep had reached through the woven wire fence, you know, how that, about a space about like that, to reach some grass on the other side and couldn't get out. He would pull back, and his ears would catch on the wire, and he'd panic and just stand there going, bah, bah. And, and if we hadn't, if, if the neighbor hadn't said anything, and we hadn't, it just that sheep would have died. So sheep are very dependent. And that, I think, is why God chose sheep. Maybe that's why he even created them, so that we like sheep needing a shepherd can learn how dependent we are upon God. We had some songs that sang about that, every hour I need thee, every hour. And I will follow you, Lord. I'll follow you wherever you go. Where you go, I'll go. So we're going to look at Psalm 23, and it's a favorite I know of many of you. Uh, it's probably the most memorized passage in Scripture next to John 3.16. And it was written by David uh, about a thousand years before Jesus, the Good Shepherd, uh, walked on earth. And it, of course, he was a shepherd, and he's reflecting here upon not only his shepherding days, but how God is the shepherd and has shepherded him. So let me read it in Psalm 23 in your Pew Bible. You can find it there. Or you probably know it from, by memory. I'm going to. And some of the verses, I'm going to insert some other words, uh, some new translations of them that might be helpful. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And the new NIV uh, translation of it says, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Or again, the uh, new NIV has, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. And I like the translation, he guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or again, it's translated, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Now, I um, have some pictures. I when I was in Israel about 24 years, 25 years ago, I took hundreds and hundreds of pictures, and I have uh, a lot of pictures of sheep. <laughs> I'm sure you're surprised at that. Anyway, no, I, I, I just love the sheep, and so I've got a lot of pictures, and uh, they say a, th a picture is worth a thousand words, and I've got about 20, so you can kind of calculate how long this message would be if I didn't have the pictures. So, But being led by our shepherd on the right path. Why sheep? I think I've already introduced that. They're so dependent. They're so needy. They are also so, when they bond with their shepherd, they will follow that shepherd anywhere. And so they're a good picture of us and our need, but also of what we should be. Well, the Lord is my shepherd. We're going to start off with the green pastures. And the thing that surprised me the most when I was in Israel was the green pastures. We had green pastures on the farm, and our, she our sheep were out there. It was knee-deep 
grass or alfalfa or whatever. Well, knee deep to the sheep anyway. And anyway, they, it was green. And I expected that in Israel, that's what we would find. These are the green pastures. Where David, in the Judean wilderness, pastured the sheep. In some of these places, it never rains. It literally never rains. And yet they are the pastures for the sheep. How, how can that be? Well, in the, in the evening, the dew, the fog kind of rolls in off the Mediterranean, and the moisture from that fog or that dew settles on the rocks and runs down the side of the rock. And I will show you here the wilderness. This is just the, this is the landscape on which David uh, pastured the sheep. I'm going to go back to that original picture because if you look at some of the, the larger rocks, I, I have a couple of tufts of grass at home that I, I pulled up from that uh, pasture because when that dew runs down from the rock, grass springs up where that moisture was or uh, settled. One mouthful, one mouthful at a time. That's all the sheep gets. And the shepherd is careful to lead the sheep into a place where he knows that those, that grass has, has had a chance to grow. Does that ring any bells for you in what the Lord himself taught us to pray when he said, Lord, give us this day our daily bread? And when he taught us, don't worry, the sheep don't worry. They, they simply trust the shepherd. They follow the shepherd. Munch, mouthful of grass. Next rock, munch a mouthful of grass. The shepherd knows their needs, and he will provide. I think of, of in the wilderness how God was teaching the people to trust him. And what did he do? He gave them manna. Not enough for a month, not enough for 20 years. He doesn't give us. He wants us to know day by day, hour by hour, depend upon me. So that's the first lesson that you begin to learn. And, and David had learned that lesson. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And there are uh, another bunch of sheep out in the green pasture with their shepherd. That one's a little more green, so I think that might be in the part of the wilderness that got a little rain once in a while. Sometimes they get a couple inches a year, and that makes it like that. Well, let's move on. He leads me beside quiet waters. Quiet waters are important for a sheep. I, I learned that as a child, that if the sheep were drinking out of a trough or something and I put my hand in there and splashed the water around, they, they didn't like that at all. And I don't know quite why sheep don't like, I, I think it's because the water supply splashes up in, and they, and anyway, they, they panic. Uh, it's important water in the wilderness you have to have water just as you have to have food and the shepherd's job is to lead the sheep to, to good water and good water can be hard to find sometimes you can find polluted water and the sheep doesn't know the difference they need a shepherd to make sure uh, the the water can maybe have parasites that would uh, get into the sheep and would kill the sheep and so the shepherd needs to lead them to good water Jesus, you know, talks about that. I, he says, I, I am living water. If you, are you thirsty? Then come to me and drink. And, and we as human beings are so thirsty. We, we, we have so much need and so much longing, and we'll, we'll turn to all kinds of things. And you hear it in the news every day, don't you? People turn to drugs, and, or they've turned to uh, some kind of sexual experience, or they've turned to... You know, they, they try to relationship things that don't work out for them. And, and all of that is trying to satisfy that, that deep thirst. So the shepherd must lead to good water, safe water. And in, in the land, uh, there is that kind of water. Here's a, a man who's drinking out of, a, well, it's just, you might think, oh, boy, I wouldn't drink that water. Hey, that's good water. comes out of that rock, and it's pure and, and it's good, sweet water. Here are some sheep drinking from quiet waters. 
still waters of, of an aqueduct. I took this picture because th this is a, you see a little bit of water maybe if you can, eh, not, not, not really in this picture, but this is a wadi. This is a, a stream bed where the water would run and after it would kind of dry up a bit, then there would be pools of water. And the shepherd could lead the sheep into, into these, uh, where these pools of water were. But he had to be careful. Well, I'm going to go back to that picture. This one reminded me, and the reason I took the picture, it reminded me of that parable Jesus told. He said, those who, who hear my words and, and, and keep them and, and do them, or like the man who builds his house on the rock. But the person who, who hears my words and does not perform them, does not do them, is like the person who builds his house on the sand. And you see the sand there on the right. And uh, well, you know the story. You know what happens because this happens. When the floods come, then it gets swept away. Well, we were in that wadi. We were told that just a couple of months before we were there, a shepherd had led his sheep into that where there was a water pool. He didn't know that about 10 miles upstream there had been a huge rainstorm and a wall of water came down. I bought this picture because I wasn't there when it happened. The shepherd escaped. He managed to climb up the side of the wall, but the sheep... They were all swept away, and they never found them, never found them. But again, that illustrates the importance of having a shepherd who leads us to that which will satisfy and will not end up destroying us. And we've got that shepherd. That's what he does. And here is a picture of our group uh, found this pool. The shepherd could lead sheep there, always being conscious of the dangers. But he guides me in the right paths, and I, I like this. This is one of my favorite parts of the, of the psalm, because you, you can see here as you look, there are paths all over the place out in the wilderness, and they crisscross, and, and you look at that, and you think, now, um, what's the right path here for us to go? Well, that's just like this world, this is just like our life, isn't it? We live in a world in which people, well, they say, hey, this is the way you ought to go, or this is the way you ought to live, or oh, come, 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 do this. And they have, there are all these paths, all these choices. How do you know which is the right path? The whole wilderness is covered with these paths. I uh, wish I had one of the pictures. I, I couldn't find it, put it in here. It's in my slides somewhere. But uh, it's a place where the paths really do crisscross, and you, and you look at it and think, wow, yeah, how would you know the right path? And, and some paths go along, and, and then they, you can maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but it, it diverges. Uh, one goes one way and the other the other way. And if you were there, what choice? I, I think of Robert Frost's uh, poem about that. I like this one because, <laughs> well, that looks like the right path, right? That's a pretty well-traveled path. Well, you remember what Jesus said? Broad is the way that leads to destruction and narrow is the path. That, that Well, I, I followed this path. And it looked like a going good, good direction here. But guess where it led? A cliff. Yeah, a cliff. And I thought about that. If a sheep had been following that path on their own in the twilight, they don't see so good in the dark, uh, it, it would have plunged to its death. And so there again, we have, in, in all the paths that we have, the Lord, the Lord promises that he will guide us, he will lead us. And I think that for Westview right now, that's one of the reasons I chose this passage and these pictures because we have some choices, and how do you know the right path, and what, what, what's next for us in our life as a church? And it's very important, and thank you, Dan, for praying for our leaders, because it's very important that they uh, discern, clearly discern what God's plan is for us, what his will is, what paths we are 
to be taking. And that's hard work. Um, how do you discern? Well, the Lord does not abandon us. Uh, all of us know that song about your word is a, a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Well, God's word is one of the ways he guides us. Another way is by his spirit. He gives us his, his Holy Spirit to uh, have insights and, and to discern things. And, and he gives other people. So the counsel of other people and their, their advice and so on become part of the way they filled with the Holy Spirit, we having the Holy Spirit together to discern what is the right path. I like this picture. I, I took it. Uh, you can see the Dead Sea down below, and I, well, 24 years ago, I was a lot more nimble <laughs> than I am now. So I've been climbing up above uh, quite, a, quite high, and then it was time to go back down because our bus was down below, and, and uh, I started to go down, and I wasn't on a path, and the rocks, I, I was tripping over them, there was shale, I'm slipping, and, and then I saw, you see those two white lines? down the lower part, if you can't see them in the back, somebody had marked the trail. And I got on that path, and well, it was still not easy, but sure a lot easier than stumbling around going on wrong paths. Uh, who knows how I would have gotten down, because uh, some of those paths ended up in dead ends. You know, people say, well, all paths will lead to God. Paths, uh, some paths don't go anywhere. And in life, that's true. Some paths just don't go anywhere, or they don't go anywhere good. But God promises he is our shepherd, and he will not mislead us. Trust him, listen to him, ask him, and he will lead us in the right path. And through the valley of the shadow of death. One of the things about sheep is... Uh, they don't see so well. Uh, it, it, they're okay in the day, but they don't see well at night. They're not nocturnal animals. They're not, not like a cat or something. And uh, so when you talk about shadows, it, our group was, uh, went to the edge of a valley, and looking down in that valley, you can see how the shadows there. And sometimes the shepherd would lead the, the sheep through, through the shadows of the valley, and what, kind, what dangers there are in the valley. There could be wild animals lurking. And, and of course, the sheep are nervous anyway because they can't see so well and, and it's dark. And, and there are also holes. There are uh, drop-offs and the sheep could, could fall. And, and David knew that. He had had to lead his sheep through valley times, dark times. And he himself had gone through dark times, as you know. The valley of the shadow of death when, when Absalom had died or when his son had died and the other, the little baby had died and, and, he, and he goes through that time of dark grief when I go through the darkest valley. Well, sometimes in life God leads us through valleys and they're, they're tough times, hard times, dark times. Um, we were at a funeral yesterday and I was just reflecting upon when uh, a loved one dies, that, that's a dangerous time for those who remain. Uh, it can be uh, a time where people wonder where God is and maybe even rebel or, or, or go, uh, go leave their shepherd for a while. Or, or it can be a time where uh, in that darkness there's the losing of hope. And uh, I had one of the sheep in my first church, one, uh, we're talking a woman here, but when she lost her husband, that, that was true of her. And, uh, and she died in the dark valley. And I think it was just, a, again, a heartbroken uh, woman who, uh, it's dangerous in the valley. But David knew, the Lord is, he's with me. Even though I go through the darkest valley, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I don't have a rod and a staff here, but the rod is really a club that the shepherd carries to fend off wild animals. And David had done that, killed the bear and the lion, and he had spared the sheep that way. But there's also the staff, and the picture over there does have a picture of the staff. And with that staff, the shepherd, if, if a sheep would fall into the hole in some way in one of these dark valleys, 
didn't see it. He could take the crook of that and pull that sheep up and close to himself or herself because in Israel a lot of the shepherds are women. The uh, other end of that staff was uh, very useful for guiding the sheep. And I, I saw a shepherd do this. It was uh, a sheep that was really distressed. And, and the, sheep, uh, w- the shepherd could see that sheep was distressed. He took the staff and just laid it softly on the back of the sheep. And then as they walked along, just kept it there on the back of the sheep. And it was like an extension of the shepherd's hand. And you could just see the, that sheep calm down. And again, David knew that kind of thing. Uh, as he went through the dark valleys, Lord, you're, you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, and you continue to guide me. Just one more. You can imagine a sheep that can't climb and is following and doesn't know the path. I mean, this is, this is intimidating stuff, walking through a valley. I'm going to save that for a little bit. I'm just going to leave it up there and save it. Because I want to pick up a couple of other things that are you, you maybe haven't seen in this psalm. This psalm really has two parts. The first verses, David is talking about the Lord being his shepherd, and it's all he, he, he. Once you get to verse 4, and, and the, the Jewish people have pointed this out to me, that there's a switch. That at that point, it becomes you. And and. In the Hebrew, there are exactly the same number of letters before this verse as after this verse. Now, I don't know how significant that might be, but that's kind of interesting. So that David in the first part is talking about his shepherd and, and how he can trust that shepherd. And, 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 and then, he, he, I think at that point in verse 4, he is reflecting upon his own life and what has happened. And especially when he gets to that darkest valley. He knew, as I mentioned, the dark valley of the shadow of death. He'd experienced lots of death in his family and in his life and among his followers. But a table, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When David was fleeing from Absalom, his own son was trying to kill his father, and, and David had to flee before Absalom and his army. And he's out in the Judean wilderness where he had led all these sheep. And, and lo and behold, as they're hungry and thirsty, one of David's friends come with a meal prepared. And so David is sustained, and his, his fellow uh, followers are sustained by that table right in the presence of of the enemy. Or you anoint my head with oil. Uh, Sheep are very susceptible to injury and to other problems. Uh, When I was teaching, I would say to the kids, you know, sheep are really dumb. And I, uh, we had some sheep that died of wet weather. And they'd look at me and say, that's not possible. How would a sheep, you mean they drown? I didn't know, no. They just weren't smart enough to get in out of the rain. Even though there was a shed right there for them, they didn't go in. And we were not very good shepherds because we didn't notice until too late that, that they had been soaked, their wool had gotten soaked, and flies had come and had laid eggs. And it's, it's not a pretty sight. If you're squeamish, I'm sorry, but they got maggots. And I spent hours cleaning those sheep putting powder on them, trying to medicate them. Many of the, uh, we had some that died. The shepherd in Israel knew the danger of insects. And anointing with oil, sometimes mixed with sulfur, became like, well, like deep woods off for the sheep. It would keep the insects away. But there was another thing that the shepherd would do as, as uh, at the end of the day, as they were coming into the sheepfold, he would check them. He would call them each by name as they went passing by, maybe touching them with his hand or with his staff. But if there was an injury, he would anoint them with oil. And David had had that many times himself, where the Lord, and of course, I, I think, always think of oil and, and the Holy Spirit together, because 
that the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And so with his spirit, with his healing work, he cares for us. And then my cup overflows. <laughs> we were in a Bedouin camp, and I, should, I wish I, I should have redone this and put some other pictures in. We were in a Bedouin camp down in the Negev, which is the south desert of Israel. And you know uh, how important hospitality was in the wilderness. If you didn't have food and drink, you could die. And so when you had a stranger come passing through, uh, hospitality was great. Back all the way into Abraham's day, remember how strangers came and how he, he bent over backwards to take care of them, feed them, give them drink. And they still do that today. Thousands of years later, the Bedouins, who are the native people shepherding there, and we went to one of those camps. And they're still living in tents, just like Abraham did. And they fed us. I still oh, think about it. I can almost smell the flatbread that uh, the wife had cooked on the open, over the open flame. But they had tea for us. And they put it, we had, each had a cup. And it was kind of funny because there were some girls who didn't like the tea, some girls in the group, and they would quick drink it down. <laughs> there. And as soon as they did that, guess what? The daughters of our host would come around and fill the cup up again to the rim. And that happened a couple of times. And finally, somebody said to them, uh, girls, if you don't like the tea, don't drink it because they're going to keep filling it. And the Lord does that. That's what David says. He, he keeps filling my cup. You know, wasn't there a song some time ago about an empty cup? And all that? It, you know, I, anyway, it's just kind of popped into my mind. But fill my cup, Lord. Yeah, he does that. And, and so David's reflecting upon the goodness of God and, and how God has cared for him. And I'm going to take that last phrase, and then I want to go to the last couple of pictures. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I didn't catch that until just recently, and I had a, a Jewish person who pointed it out to me. It's surely goodness and love will follow me. Now, David is reflecting upon his life at this point, how God has been with him in the shadows, how God has comforted him, protected him with his rod and staff, how God has anointed him with oil, how his cup has overflowed, how, you know, all those things. And now, I think he probably wrote this near the end of his life, goodness and love will follow me, will be the consequence of my life. We were at that funeral yesterday, and I was so uh, moved by the people who shared, the family members did, and then afterwards, too, there were stories about this man who had been a shepherding elder in his church, uh, who, well, Sandy had a story uh, about him. Uh, he was the husband of one of her co-workers, and after Sandy's husband died, uh, she was out mowing lawn, and the mower broke down, and uh, she called him, and, and he was there very quickly, right? And that happened more than once. Yeah, well, when we got married, I think I got rid of that mower because <laughs> I wasn't good at fixing it. But, but he did that for all kinds of people. And, and so there's a legacy there. There are the consequences of a life, a man following the shepherd, filled with the spirit of, of God and overflowing with with love and, and compassion for people, a legacy of goodness and love. And then one day, that day that he died, to go into the presence of God and hear, well done, good and faithful servant. This picture I took, because it has both the Judean wilderness and this is the Jericho Road, if you've ever heard of it. And off in the distance, and you can just see it just a little bit, there's the city of Jericho, the city of Palms. And to me, I can just imagine somebody walking from Jerusalem down uh, that road to Jericho, through the desert, through the difficult times, through the dark valleys and all, and all of a sudden, there they are in this lush, beautiful paradise. 
because that's really what Jericho is like, the city of palms along the Jordan River. And to me, it just became a picture of, of uh, our journey through life and then the dwelling place forever. Well, this is going to be my last picture. We've got a little video for, for a few minutes. Uh, but I wanted to go to John 10. The words of our good shepherd, this is the whole chapter is all about the shepherd and his flock, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to pick out certain, certain verses. Uh, this, the Gospels tell us that Jesus looked at the crowds and he was, had compassion on them because they were harassed and, and helpless like sheep. And so here he is, the good shepherd, and he calls his sheep by name. He knows our name. And leads them out. And then he goes on to say, when the shepherd has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. And then Jesus says again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. And I'll just pause there because this is the gate. And this is a sheepfold, not in real good shape, but I think it's still even being used, uh, was being used yet while we were there. And the shepherd you say, well, where's the gate? Well, that's the shepherd. The shepherd would lay down in the entrance, and no, no one, nothing could get past him, no wild animal or anything. The sheep were safe. He's the gate. But also when the morning comes, then, then he would uh, stand up and call them by name, and the sheep would come out. And now hear what Jesus says. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And I just picture the shepherd standing there calling the sheep by name as they're coming in and uh, checking out how they're, you know, what they need. And, and they go on in and they spend the night. And he says, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And he goes on to talk about the hired hand doesn't do that. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Well, I hope you can see how important it is that, that we hear the voice of our shepherd and follow him in all the circumstances of life. Mike, I'm ready for the video now, if we can have that. It's about a five-minute video, and I thought it, uh, well, I'll let it speak for itself. Hi, baby. Hi. Ignored. <laughs> have you ever felt like God is distant, that he doesn't really care about the details of your life? Well, in this video, we want to show you that God is so near to you, that he cares about every single thing you do. And we're going to use sheep to do it. Hi, honey. You know, one of the most common symbols for God used throughout the Bible is that God is a shepherd. I mean, we see it in perhaps one of the most famous Bible verses of them all. The Lord is my shepherd. But it's not until you come to the deserts of Israel and you see firsthand a shepherd with his flock that you truly understand what it means when God says that he is a shepherd. You know, I think it's funny that in our Western culture, if you were to ask, what is God? We come up with the answers like, God is love, God is mercy, God is holy, God is righteous. And all of those are good and true and biblical, but they're a little hard to wrap our hands around. When we come to an Eastern culture, we hear answers like, God is my rock, God is my strong tower, the Lord is my shepherd. It's almost like the Lord wants to relate himself to us in something that we can touch, something we can smell, something we can see with our own eyes. Yeah, you know, I've got three daughters and my middle daughter is a really good artist. But if I was to ask her to draw God is love or God is mercy or God is grace, all of which are biblical, she would have to draw something that is, well, abstract. 
But if I asked her to draw God is my shepherd, that's something tangible that she can draw. And you know, as a dad, I'm so thrilled to know that she can see God as being something that is tangible and someone who is real. When David was writing Psalm 23, he wasn't just using poetic language and imagery. He was taking from his experience as a shepherd and using it as a picture of how God relates to us. I just think about these sheep. They're not the most intelligent of animals, but they know to recognize the voice of their shepherd. And not so much of what we need in our walk with the Lord. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And we need to ask ourselves, do we recognize the voice of our shepherd? Fast forward thinking Would you rewind and let us see In the Bible, God talks about leaving the 99 to go after the one. And even while we've been hanging out with sheep and, and they're going all over the place in these hills, there's this one sheep and it just reminds me of the heart of God. God wants to leave the crowd at times to show you that he's paying attention to the details of your life. That it doesn't matter if you've taken a step back, that he's taking two steps forward and loves you no matter what you've done to distance yourself from him, that he is still drawing near to you. You know, one of the first times I ever got to see a shepherd with his flock in Israel was in the desert at sunset. And I noticed that when the sun was up and everything was light, the shepherd was leading his sheep from out in front. But as the sun went down and things got dark, the shepherd dropped back to be amongst his sheep. And that's almost exactly like what we read in Psalm 23. You know, the Lord leads us, but when we go through a dark valley, that's when the Lord comes beside us. That's when God is with us. And that's when he comforts us. As we're talking about shepherds coming close in darkness, actually last year was the darkest time I've ever faced. And through physical sickness leading to mental illness and depression and just feeling so alone, I know God is my shepherd in such a different and tangible way because at my darkest time, he drew near. And I don't know what you're facing, but I know a God that wants to draw so near to you, that cares about the details of your life. And no matter if it's family situations or, or physical diagnosis, that nothing's too big for him. And he's going to come close in the darkness and be with you and make a way for you. No matter what you're facing, he's going to come and be near. If you want to Hi, baby. God is with us. Westview, God is with us. And I mean that in the plural. He's with us together. But he's with us, like this woman was saying, individually as well. We need, you need, I need a shepherd. And we have him in Jesus Christ. Pray with me. Lord, we are prone to go our own way and get lost and get into trouble and put ourselves sometimes in the dark valley by our own actions. And Lord, we, we repent of that. We ask, Lord, that you would come with your word and with your spirit and with people who could care for us, that you would show us the way, that you would be very near. Lord, and I think of those who, who are going through dark times right now. And I just pray that uh, what this woman's testimony was, that that would be also the testimony of each of us, that in those darkest hours, you were the closest and you gave what we needed, your healing, your comfort, your strength, your Holy Spirit. So shepherd us, Lord. Shepherd us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
the blessing comes from the last chapter of Hebrews, 13th chapter. Hebrews has talked a lot about Jesus, our high priest, as he lays down his life for the sheep. And then these words of blessing at the end. The God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, amen.